Hi guys, happy Friday. Oh, fucking hate Friday, fucking hate the weekends. Whoops, freaking sorry. I to bleep that out. Mr. Matthew, your video on uh, Blood Witches was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> I love you using the word poppycock. That was incredibly amazing. So, um, before we get like even further into um, ew, traditional craft, Children of Cain, which is even better than this one, and it explains the whole bloodline and lineages and all of that even more so, we have a few others to go through. So, um, this is basically encountering the crooked path. So it's actually pretty interesting. If I can actually get my... There we go. Pages to stay. So, um, basically for those walking the crooked, the bat, crooked path, <laughs> the biggest issue is finding more material. So much like Wicca was back when he says, I first started to explore my spiritual path. It's really difficult to get that information. When you find it, you know it, and you will literally take it and write it or do something with it. It's incredible. So, um, where'd I go? Um, where'd I go? So, there, yeah, there are very few books dealing directly with the subject, especially for the beginner. Now, more advanced students can make use of uh, some of the academic works. But the newcomer, you know, is left in the dark, which is ridiculous. So that part, this is... Or that is the part of the reason uh, for him writing this book. So, but there are sources that can be utilized by the seeker, providing that they learn to make use of the particular mindset this path enters. Engenders, sorry, engenders. So, by a bent line, by a straight line, by a crooked line. I love that. I do. It's amazing. So, this is a saying that is frequently heard from practitioners. It refers to the mindset required for when working the when walking this path. But it also describes the classic, classic witch's mark. A little bit more. So, which is often depicted as a circle cross, but it's more accurately portrayed as a goose foot inside of a circle. Now, as a, depic or a description of the mindset used when walking upon the crooked path, um, it's an oblique reference to the description given to the candidate standing at the entrance to the temple, waiting to be initiated into the Egyptian mysteries. And this is beautiful right here. So it says, behind you, the path twists from side to side like a serpent, and before you it rises and falls like the waves of the sea. But beneath your feet, the path is straight and true, and you walk it with a firm step. That, I, I love that. I love that. I think it's beautiful. So, um, this gives us a sense of a path that is not fixed or tied to dogmatic approach. It's very true but rather one that is that shifts and turns with our growing and our changing understanding of its nature. So it's going to change, it's going to evolve, blah, blah, blah. So it's prime, or it is primed to a specific meaning or way of being by us. We pin it to the mundane world and make sense of it. So in the moment, uh, but are aware that it has changed from what we thought it was yesterday, and we know that new insights will cause it to change tomorrow. So basically, it is literally everything is just, it's always changing, always. So yeah, that's, I mean, pretty much amazing. But yeah, that's the, that's the traditional path. So now we have the truth betwixt the horns. So I know we covered this before, but this is even more layman's terms. So, alright, the old saying, uh, truth, the truth lies betwixt the horns, is a key one for the crafter who is uh, feeling their way along the path because it refers to the flaming torch of enlightenment that burns between the horns of Old Horny, or as depicted by Elephas of Levi's Baphomet. Hmm. So this is the key, uh... Well, what is that? This is, uh, so this is a key to a reoccurring puzzle in traditional crafting, so the truth often found in the resolution of a paradox. I love that. So, we often encounter this in the description of gods and other entities we encounter. So, Goda is described as neither black nor white, neither clothed nor naked, neither riding nor walking. This is often explained by the fact that she is partially or partly in shadow, composed of both dark and light, wears a fishing net, and rides a goat with her feet trailing on the ground. But the key is really that the answer embraces fully both of the opposite things. Paradox is resolved when you find the point where the two opposites can be found, or can be true. So you would find that balance, and then you find that truth within that paradox. Or that answer. Very, 
very interesting. Very interesting, and yeah, it gets complicated. Okay, now we have the Sacred Marriage. So, no, the Sacred Marriage, or um, Heroes and Gamos, is depicted in many myths throughout the world. In ancient cultures, it was manifest as a literal marriage ceremony, uh, where the ruler was united with the earthly representation of the Salvanae, so whatever, in the form of a uh, priestess. So that's the cult of Ishtar, Astaroth, or Inanna. Um, a queen of royal blood, which would be Egypt, a horse, um, Epona, Ireland, and so on. But for the practicing witch, or crafter, the sacred marriage is an entirely internal affair, at least on the personal level. It's all alchemical, very much all alchemical. So, while the um, Hieros game, Gamos is a popular way of celebrating Beltane, it is an outward expression of the inner process of uniting and balancing the higher and lower aspects of the self, so the drake and the crown, um, or shadow and stellar selves. It is an act of completion that, when fully expressed, provides the third rebirth of the initiate, making them thrice great or adept. It's pretty interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Now we have Awen. So, this is kind of, this is more Welsh, so I'm not really, yeah, I'm not too keen on the whole Welsh. Uh, in, for me, Cornwall, that their deities, they are more suited to me, so that's how I've tailored my path. Um, now, in the Welsh Celtic mysteries, Awen is a divine inspiration that em oh, animates, emanates down to humanity from the gods on high. So... Um, it is, or its three rays are said to represent land, sea and sky, or mind, body and spirit, or love and wisdom and truth. So it also, wait, it is also the image of the first three sacred, uh, Colbren letters given to, wow, somebody forming the basis of both the sacred Colbren and the regular written Colbren. So these letters are said to be I, O, and you. So for the crafter, things go a little bit deeper. So for just as there are three rays coming down from the source above, for the crafter, and together, wait, and... Oh, wait, where'd it go? For the crafters, there are also three rays going up from the source below. So as above, so below. Always. So, and together, these two um, Awen symbols form the hex star that is the simplest, truest symbol of the craft. Not the pentagram, but the hexagram. So, now we have a few more. So, we have the dedicant, um, who is basically a student who has sought and obtained provisional entry into the company or a coven. Uh, characteristics are a depiction to learning, or characteristics are a dedication to learning. Um, a hunger for knowledge and a willingness to be open to possibilities. Responsibilities are to study, to attend workings uh, where invited, and to demonstrate their readiness to move on to the stage of apprentice. So, the apprentice or squire. So, this is a student who has proven their connection to the current, the current of whatever path, you know, your, your path you're walking, who has inflamed the blood and has accepted an apprentice, or has been accepted by an apprentice, by a master crafter, um, as a full member of the company, the coven. So, apprentice refers to the one who is reliant and their master, on their master for guidance and training, while a squire referred to one who is more advanced, who is able to operate under their own stream, or steam, but is still um, answerable to their master or mistress. Yeah, I, I don't like that too much. So, <laughs> responsibilities are to attend all gatherings of the company, unless with good reason. So, uh, to study and practice the arts as guided by their master or mistress, and to be silent on matters of the art uh, to all save full members of the company. So, pretty interesting. Now we have the master crafter. So this is an accomplished crafter um, who has demonstrated that their apprenticeship days are behind them, who has inflamed the blood and summoned the ancestors, and who the ancestors have claimed as one of their own. So all master crafters are equal in status, though one may consult or seek the advice of another as a peer and the res relationship with the crafter who was their mister, mistress or mis master or mistress. <laughs> this is a little BDSM here. So now in the apprentice stage, 
uh, it'll probably remain as a uh, remain a special one bound by a mistress or mutual respect. So responsibilities are to participate fully in the work of the company, to study and practice their art, and to find and mentor at least one apprentice in their life. There are also uh, there are always required to participate in the choosing of leaders and to serve um, as a leader if chosen. So in addition, uh, there are three roles with or within the group beyond that of member in good standing: the magister, the mistress, and the guardian. So it's pretty interesting. It's very very interesting stuff, and that sums up the rest of that. A modern guy or a modern modern grimoire for modern cunning folk, something like that. Now, when we get into the children of Cain, it is so much better. We get so much more insight on just basically everything. Everything is literally broken down word for word, like witchcraft. We examine witch, all of it from its origin, and then we examine craft, what it means, all of it, everything. Even wise woman, wise man, cunning man, cunning woman, all of that. So it's really actually interesting. Very interesting stuff. So, but alright guys, I hope you enjoy. I hope you guys have a great weekend. So, I love you all very much, with all my heart. All the way from Venus. All the way back down. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So everybody please be safe. <laughs> And I love you guys.